Senator Cruz, on that theme, Facebook data shows that over the last month alone, nearly one million people, nearly one million, have been concerned about reigning in Wall Street, apparently believing that some have not been punished enough. So as an accomplished litigator yourself and a former solicitor general, would you go after the very people who believe and fear that Wall Street has ignored? In other words, the crooks that Bernie Sanders say have gotten away with a financial murder? Absolutely, yes. You know, I've spent much of my adult life enforcing the law and defending the Constitution. And the problem that underlies all of this is the cronyism and corruption of Washington. You know, the opening question Jerry asked, would you bail out the big banks again? Nobody gave you an answer to that. I'll give you an answer. Absolutely not. And what we have right now is we have Washington, as government gets bigger and bigger, you know, the biggest lie in all of Washington and in all of politics is that Republicans are the party of the rich. The truth is the rich do great with big government. They get in bed with big government. The big banks get bigger and bigger and bigger under Dodd-Frank and community banks are going out of business. And by the way, the consequence of that is small businesses can't get business loans and it is that fundamental corruption that is why six of the ten wealthiest counties in America are in and around Washington, D.C. Now, let me give you a contrast to Washington cronyism. Some weeks ago, a woman named Sabina Loving testified at a hearing that I chaired in the Senate. Sabina Loving is an African-American single mom who started a tax preparation business in the south side of Chicago. She found a storefront. She wanted to have her own business. She started a business. But then the IRS promulgated new regulations targeting tax preparers. They did it under a more than 100-year-old statute called the Dead Horse Act. Now, this statute and the IRS, in classic Washington crony fashion, had exemptions for lawyers and big fancy accountants, but Sabina had to pay $1,000 an employee. It would have driven her out of business, and Ms. Loving sued the IRS. She took the Obama IRS to court, and she won, and they struck down the rule for picking the big guys over the little guys. S Senator, I want to be, Senator, Senator I really want to be clear here. Are you saying, sir, that if the Bank of America were on the brink, you would let it fail? Yes. Now, let's be clear. There is a role for the Federal Reserve. What the Fed is doing now is it is a series of philosopher kings trying to guess what's happening with the economy. You look at the Fed, one of the reasons we had the financial crash is throughout the 2000s, we had loose money, we had an asset bubble, it drove up the price of real estate, drove up the price of commodities, and then in the third quarter of 2008, the Fed tightened the money and crashed those asset prices, which caused a cascading collapse. That's why I am supporting getting back to rules-based monetary system, not with a bunch of philosopher kings deciding, but tied ideally Sir, to Sir, I gold. understand that. I just want to be clear, if you don't mind, that, that millions of depositors would be on the line with right. that decision. Well, and, and I just yes. want to be clear. If it were to happen again, for whatever the reason, that you would let it go. You would let a Bank of America go. So, so, so let me be clear. I would not bail them out, but instead of adjusting monetary policy according to whims and getting it wrong over and over again and causing booms and busts, what the Fed should be doing is, number one, keeping our money tied to a stable level of gold, and number two, serving as a lender of last resort. That's what central banks do. So if you have a run on a bank, the Fed can serve as a lender of last resort, but it's not a bailout. It is a loan at higher interest rates. That's how central banks have worked. And I'll point out, look, we had a gold standard under Bretton Woods. We had it for about 170 years of our nation's history and enjoyed booming economic growth and lower inflation than we have had with the Fed now. We need to get back to sound money, which helps in particular working men and women. What Washington does, the people who are doing well in the Obama economy, are those with power and influence in the Obama government, the people who are that's hurt are working men and women, being, uh, that's and that's who we need to fight for. Neil, that's the difference of being an executive. And let me just explain. Uh, when a bank is ready to go under and depositors are getting ready to lose their life savings, you just don't say we believe in philosophical concerns. You know what an executive has to decide? 
When there's a water crisis, how do we get water to the city? When there's a school shooting, how do you get there and help heal a community? When there are financial crises or a crisis with Ebola, you've got to go there and try to fix it. Philosophy doesn't work when you run something. And I've got to tell you, on-the-job training for President of the United States doesn't work. We've done it for eight years, and almost eight years now, it does not work. We need an executive who's been tried, has been tested, and judge the decisions that that executive makes. I don't like what the Fed is doing, but I'll tell you what worries me more than anything else, turning the Fed over to the Congress you, of the Governor. United so Governor States Kasich, so they can Governor print the Kasich, money. That would be a very bad approach for Senator So, Governor Rubio. Kasich, why would you then bail out rich Wall Street banks, but not Main I Street, not mom and I pop, wouldn't. not Sabina Loving? Well, you just said no, an executive no, say that. knows to step in and bail they out were, a bank. They were talking about what you would do with depositors. Would you let these banks shut down? My argument is going forward, the banks have to reserve the capital so that the, cap so that the people who own the capital start pressuring the banks to not take these risky approaches, Ted. But so, at the so, end of the so day... So you said you'd well, abandon philosophy you and abandon principle, this. but what if would during, you do if, during, if the bank was failing? Because if during... Well, what would you do you if what? the bank was failing? I would not let the people who put their money in there all go down. So you would, as you an would executive, bail them out? No. I, as an executive, I would figure out how to separate those people who can afford it versus those people are the hard-working folks who put their money in those institutions. Let me, no, no, let me say another thing. Here's what I mean by that. Here's what I mean by that. When you are faced, when you are faced in the last financial crisis with banks going under, with banks going under and people, people who put their, their life savings in there, you got to deal with it. You can't turn a blind eye to it. Now, going forward, that's one thing. If you had another financial crisis, perhaps there would be an Thank effort you, to make Casey. sure that